This too was a question Commissioner Marshall. Mike, would you like to go through those facts, maps, and so forth? The, the first map that you got is a map of the uh, all the projects that we currently are working towards as far as FIA. The constraints, what you see in the purple, those are the ones that cannot, uh, cannot be wavered from. Those, those problems have to go. Uh, and then the unconstrained are the staff list of roads that my commission marshal talked about that we have petitions on, that we already have right away on. These are, work, these are roads that we're working to, to get off the list. Uh, the next slide is just a list of all of the constrained project lists. These are the 14 or so projects that are on the counties that are on the constrained list that, that were actually on the ballot. Uh, an update on Hickory Grove Road. The, uh, it's a design build project for a 260 foot bridge and a 300 foot bridge. It was awarded to Southern Concrete August 19th. Uh, for a bid amount of $2,613,684. Uh, TTL did our uh, bridge foundation investigation. Uh, Lowell Engineering did our hydraulic analysis and all of our environmental permitting. Watkins Associates and Neil Schaefer uh, completed the road plans and the bridge plans. Uh, the bridge plans uh, are complete. Uh, they're pending DOT approval. We sent them up back before Christmas. Uh, we got our review comments back. The review, uh, review comments were resubmitted to GDOT on Friday. So uh, we should be hearing something from GDOT within the next week, two weeks, uh, as far as approval uh, of the bridge plans. And once, the, once these bridge plans are approved, uh, right now Southern Concrete is looking for a uh, March 1st start date. That is a, that's an important date for for us to get started by March 1st. Uh, because after, after uh, if you, the bridges are not demoed by April the 1st, uh, April the 1st starts the, uh, the bat nesting season. So uh, the bridges will have to be netted and protected uh, as of, if they're not, if the bridges have not been removed by April 1, they have to be uh, netted uh, prior to the uh, so. so if you get back to your house during that time, you can't do anything about it until like August, like August whenever or is October now. Okay. Yeah, then until the baby bats to right. run out to the world to see. And I, I just guess if you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh any of them getting the uh, the approval in the next couple of weeks, they're planning on getting started towards the end of this month, first of March. Uh, and, uh, you know, Commission Wild Record, this would be a question a lot of people have asked how long that bridge is going to be closed. They cannot be closed over 180 days uh, for the, uh, the GDOT's contract. They, can, they cannot be closed more than 180 days for a bridge. They can get it. They can get it. They'll, they'll close on that passage on the road. Passage on the road has got to be completely open within 180 days. Before going on, are there any questions on getting further to it? Uh, are you okay? Uh, Clydestone Road, uh, that's a grading drainage uh, and paving project. Uh, uh, Clydestone Road is 1.5 miles. Uh, Simpson Lane is 0 0.85 miles. Uh, LEA is the design engineer on the project. Uh, Clydestone Road is a minor collector uh, that will connect between 41 and Valdale. Simpson Lane will serve as a second point of ingress and egress into Grove Point. Uh, we know for a fact that water will be installed the entire length of the project. We're still looking to see uh, if it's feasible to put sewer in there just because of some elevations and the area that we're going to be serving and able to serve for. Uh, so sewer may or may not actually end up going in there, but it will be able, will be capable of being served by E1 if not. So, uh, and then, um, 
construction is scheduled to start uh, August of this year uh, with a one-year completion time frame. Uh, and as I was sharing with a couple of you earlier, uh, as of uh, last night, we got uh, 15 signed uh, agreements on the flight zone out of 40 and should get another 8 or 10 today. Uh, so we, we've done well in the last week. Uh, we've used some uh, agreements signed with those folks. Any questions? Flight zone will be issued in Calumet with the uh, group after your meeting. Well, I, I would just add to that, Mike. From what you're seeing right now, there's not going to be any issue with the meeting you made that day. It, there's a couple of estates. We, we did get one estate resolved last night. There's a couple of estates that we're, we're trying to work through that have a lot of errors. Uh, any uh, us having to do good condemnation on the estate because there's no uh, person that can legally sign for the estate. I don't see any reason we don't get to make the papers. Uh, the next road is High Tower and Cooper. Uh, High Tower is 1.75 miles. Cooper is 1.37 miles. Uh, innovate uh, Engineering Survey is the design engineer on the project. Uh, High Tower is going to be realigned on that north uh, west corner. Uh, to account for the laydown area for the airplanes. So, uh, so that's already in the works. A uh, portion of High Tower Road will be abandoned here uh, so that fence line can be relocated. Uh, there will be railroad crossing signals and crossing arms installed uh, as part of the project. And uh, the construction on this one is scheduled for January 21, uh, again with a 365 day uh, time period. These uh, cross arms, railroad cross arms, is that a railroad responsibility? No, sir. We'll have to pay for those. In every situation? Yes, sir. Your road is crossing their tracks. Right. I look at it, their track is crossing out. Mm -hmm. They were there first. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they were there first. <laughs> Mike, you had a work. They, we, uh, we have talked to Moody, and I think the chairman got a letter <coughs> out before uh, Christmas uh, from uh, the wing commander stating that you know, they're good with this, they're good with the alignment, and uh, they're working through their uh, legal folks to, you know, as far as the transition of trading the old road for the new right of way. So, so they're working through that with their legal folks. So <coughs> between their legal folks and our legal folks, uh, we'll, you may take, it may take the October to get that one resolved. <laughs> but we got to October to, to have right away certified for high tower. Yes. Questions? All right, the next slide is just a, it's a list of all the rest of the projects and the proposed DOT uh, let date. This was the let date that came from the original schedule when GDOT anticipated this being a, a full 10 years. Uh, the last conversation with GDOT, they were running uh, about 18 to 20 months ahead of schedule. So these projects at the end are going to move up uh, you know, in, in time frame. Uh, they've already talked to us uh, about possibly moving at least one or two of the uh, band three projects into band two. And we've already uh, talked about uh, moving, uh, going ahead and start moving forward with the old 41 project uh, and getting old 41 ready to go. Uh, so uh, they, they just have not given you the, the green light. That, start with that one yet, but uh, with everything moving uh, forward and the collections are, are good, last month uh, we collected $112,000, which is just our county's portion of the 
in a non-constrained mode, uh, which is we're, at, we're supposed to be around 90 million or 90 thousand dollars a month, and we we're at 112, so we're about 20, 25 percent over what uh, what they were projecting. Questions on the constrained projects? All right, the, the next list is a list of the of the non-constrained or unconstrained projects. We have completed Boring Pond Lane. Quail Hollow is under construction. Uh, these are the, what we're going to, we're planning on laying out to contractors. Uh, Cannon Drive, uh, should go at the end of this year. My cannon is behind Rascal's down. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All those little dirt streets. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, Williams School Road and Fender Road sometime early in 2021. Uh, Van Road uh, 2023. Uh, Deerfield 2024. Uh, Black Road 2026. Hardy 2027 and Pine Grove, or Pine Grove, the Pine Cove states east uh, in 2028. But again, those are going to move forward with the continued uh, overage in the money. So that, that was the original uh, dates. So if, if it does roll out to 10 years, these would be when it would happen. But, uh, you know, we're anticipating uh, Van Grove moving up to 2022. And you know, so forth and so on. These birds are going to continue just to move up. Now, you're doing one portion of Van Road with Quail Hall. Yes, you? sir. About a quarter of a mile. About a quarter of a mile. Up. I, just, I don't want a, a paved road going on to a dirt road. The uh, uh, Deerfield subdivision, does that want to include Rowell Road? All of those hook up to Boring Pond Road. All yes, of all those roads. That the drainage problem that. Uh, that we continue to have over there off of uh, Deerfield Lane, I believe it is. Uh, that can, that drainage problem, uh, we're going to be able to get that taken care of and that resolved. But uh, anything that we do right now over there is you know, very few uh, because that whole design will change whenever, uh, whenever the, the road is built. Uh, our public works crew. Uh, we're, going, we're under construction with Arapahoe and Cheyenne. Uh, we plan on starting uh, Glenview, Ridgecrest, and Woodland uh, over there at uh, off of Boonderry Road. We plan on starting that probably June, July, somewhere in that time frame. You know, just depending on how quick we can get out of Arapahoe and Cheyenne. You say June? June, July, somewhere along in that time frame. We plan on getting started there. Uh, uh, then we're going to then we're doing the Burke Hall subdivision, Commissioner Wildbacker down there off of uh, Hickory Grove, uh, Burke Ridge Drive, Chairman, that's the one up there that's linking up that new subdivision. Uh, Bethany Road is that little short, uh, two tenths of a mile road, uh, right there by the Drew House, uh, off of Old Forty One. I mean, we abandoned the portion of it uh, many years back. Uh, it's, it's very difficult for Robin's guys to get in there and maneuver with the, with the uh, motivators because you know, there's no place for them to turn around. So the easiest thing for us to do is we got right away on the road, let's pay it and get out of there. And, uh, so it's on the 41 end, not on the 41 end. It turns right there by uh, the, the, the Drew, Drew House. The Drew House. Mm -hmm. And goes down there and digs at Mr. Riker's house. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so that so we've got right away there. Uh, best thing to do is pay it and, and move on. We, and that, that takes care of that little road. It takes care of a headache uh, for us having to turn around because otherwise we're having to back out in the, uh, to 41. And if you've been on 41 lately, you know how much traffic's on 41. Back in a motor grade ride on that road is not safe. So, uh, so that's. So we can get that one off the list. Uh, Knox Road, uh, uh, Wilkerson Road, and uh, Pine Cove Farms. Uh, again, as these, these things will really move up, uh, but it's just you know, how quick can our guys get through them. <coughs> Quick question. Um, it's pretty fun. Um, the Paul Bear Cemetery was called a portion of the What's the name of the road? Uh, name of the road. Is it on this? It's Paul Bear, right? Paul Bear, right? That little short section of what happened to me. We had it on this? No. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
is that if you call, and I don't name any names, but if you call X, Y, Z company to come pay the road for you, more times than not, especially some of the smaller companies outside of Scrubs and Marines, they'll come do all the all the prep work and the base and the grading and all that, and then they call Scrubs to come pay it anyway. So I mean, you know, even some of the companies that we would contract with would ultimately turn around and recontract with Scrubs to do the pay. So yeah, there, there's multiple multiple contractors out there that have just basically got out of the paving business. They do everything all the way up the paving, and then hire Reeves or Scrubs to pay for. Okay, uh, does everybody feel comfortable on the definition here and the difference in constrained and unconstrained? I just had a question, and it pertains to all roads, but will we choose the bill or are we touching the basis with the individuals prior uh, just to see if they, you know, still, that they're still the same residents from the same? 10 or 15 years ago, I think about this high power road situation when, when they came out and I guess you know, all of a sudden you know, they, they had disagreements about or they say they didn't remember signing or it's new homes or something like that. Or, or were we touching bases with individuals before we consider to, to pave a, a, a road that was on the list years ago? Uh, not to the level that I think you're talking about because um, just like any of these projects that Mike is working on now, that we, and he says, you know, we have a right of way. Um, we know that we are, we have a legal right going on to pay those roads. Sometimes, whether it would be to a condemnation or just the property owner deeding us that property. So, we don't go back. Say to those property owners, you are aware that we have this right of way. You are aware that we're going to pay for that. If you if you look down that list on uh, the 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 big constrained project list, uh, your old forty one wide, you're not getting any right of way. Shallow road, you're not getting any right of way. Brixton Road, we made a road. Brixton Road. Six or eight years ago, mm -hmm. and we got that road has been surveyed. We got right away deeds on it, and uh, we just never got to the finish line with Brixton Road. We got about half of the, the right away signed, uh, and so those people out there, they're calling all the time asking, When are y'all coming back? When are you coming back? So they're ready to come back. Uh, Old Plyville Road, wide, we're not going to have to have any right away there. Uh, Coleman Road, Northwest. Those folks are ready for us. They, I mean, they're calling and asking for it. Uh, Twin Lake Road, we've got all the right of Twin Lake Road except for two parcels. And I think we all know which one those, which those two are. Uh, Oil Road Extension, we've already got the right of way uh, there. That's a brand new road. Uh, Kennedy Clydeville Road, those folks are ready. You ride down Kennedy Clydeville Road during the middle of the summer. You'll know why they're ready. I mean, that, that's the one of the first both roads washboarding that we have in Canada that are all have to go every two or three days sometimes to that one because it's so washboarded. And then really the only one that's, that we have that we don't have to have not had any communication with is the folks on Hall Road. Now my plan is when, when we get closer to Hall Road is we will send out something to the folks on Hall Road to let them know what's fixing to happen. But Again, this, this this road is just like high power. It's not open for debate. It, the, this road is going to happen uh, because it's on that constrained list. Uh, these these roads, these I mean, this road, this project has to move forward. We can't we can't take this project off and add another project. Now, as far as <coughs> un unrestrained or any any road, say that we we have a, a river that's uh, not even on the tier in a sense. Uh, that say the previous owners may have petitioned 20 years ago, and now it's new owners. Uh, you know, say that the opportunity comes where we possibly can pay that road, uh, you know, and, and we get there, and can we just, you know, it's like a... We see your unconstrained roads that you do are roads that's on that list. Those are not attached to TIA. They're attached to TIA only through the 25% of funding 
that comes directly back to Lowndes County from that for those specific projects. Okay, uh, and, and I'm talking about even roads that are not associated with TIA. Uh, I mean, just to just we'll, so we'll have, we'll have any other funding <coughs> source now other than TIA money. We don't want, because the new SPLOS, the, 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 the SPLOS money that we have allocated for roads is just for, uh, to, for the LMA match. Okay, so we, don't, we, don't have any, we don't have any additional <coughs> pots of money to go pay for it. But I'd like to say, the roads that you saw on that list of what he's showing you are the roads that's going to be paid in the future. Well, all Commissioner Marshall was asking is before we go pay the road that's not on the deal list, we make sure they still want it. Can we do that? Sure. Is that what you mm -hmm. yeah. Mike, is uh, Brickstown and Old Clydeville Road, is that going to move up? Big one. I believe Old Clyde definitely will move up. Uh, that's, that is one of the projects that they have talked to us about moving in the band to, uh, is, is Old Clyde Uh I definitely feel like that one will move up, and Bridgeton probably will as well. Well, you mentioned that they've been working on Bridgeton for six or seven years now, and it's according to this six years out. Colson Road is inside the, the railroad driveway. So we got the railroad to give us a pretty <laughs> road. And it's only <laughs> <one of the, laughs> <laughs> the Any other questions concerning uh, spot shows, the two spots here? If not, um, I'll take a, a 15 minute break.